Kristen Sellers says she was fed up with being sexually harassed by her housing inspector. So she took matters into her own hands, secretly recording their conversation. I will. He had the power to evict her if she didn't give in, she says, to his demands for sex. His first time coming to the house to do the um, inspection approval. What kind of vibe are you picking up? He felt like I was like weak. He pulls me in the bathroom and he stands in front of me. He blocks me and he still, you know, shows himself. And when you say shows himself, what he, do you he, mean? He pulled out his penis. A single mom, desperate to stay in her home, Sellers decided that she wasn't going to be a victim. He basically let me know, like, I'm powerful. I'm powerful and you're yeah, not. not. I had to stand up to him. Demanding justice empowering others to come forward. Sellers' case exposing just how rampant sexual harassment in the housing industry really is, striking the one place that's supposed to be safe, where you live. If we take away the silence, then they don't have any more power. Sellers' journey here was long and troubled, going to jail on drug-related charges. When I came home from prison, I had lost everything. I always battled with myself. I know. She moved back to her hometown of Laurenburg, North Carolina, picking up two minimum wage jobs. I was probably walking like two and a half, three miles a day. She'd applied for a public housing voucher through Section 8 in 2011. Her goal, the American dream, a home for her and her three kids. What did that voucher represent to you? It represented a place for my family to stay. I valued it with everything in me. And how crucial are these vouchers in order to get this kind of housing? The waiting lists are years. I mean, they're, they are almost like gold. But Sellers got a voucher and was able to rent this home. As part of the public housing program, a local inspector would check on the house periodically. His name? Eric Pender. He had the power to basically make sure I didn't have a home. Sellers recalls her very first inspection. He was asking me why I didn't have male figures, you know, to help me. Why you don't have a boyfriend? Did um, you start getting nervous? Yeah, I definitely did. Suddenly, she says the meeting changed from awkward to aggressive. When you're in a situation with a person who can stop you from having a house, I was like, you know, listen, you know, I'm not, I don't want to do this, you know, and he still, you know, shows himself. He pulled out his penis. She says she left the room shocked, but didn't engage. I just couldn't believe he had that audacity, the bravery. It's different because this is, that's your, your sanctuary. That's where you're supposed to be safest. It's your home. Why would your background make him want to target you? Because it, my word against his, it makes me look like a liar. What made you stand up to him? At that point, I've been through so much. And then I believed that if I did get something, it's going to be something I have to give him over and over. I just needed some way to prove it. Sellers told a friend about Pender's behavior who reported it to Pender's boss. But she also sought the advice of a private investigator who suggested she record her conversation. Well, my heart was beating really, really fast. My hands were sweaty. Like I was like literally trembling out of my boots. But what she didn't know was that Pender's boss had told him about her complaint. All I did was try to help her. And, you know, you get tired of me asking you for and everything. Pender then seems to admit that he had approached sellers before. So in the end, it was more, you still owe me, like, you know. So you still owe me? Sex, basically. We almost straight. You take care of me later on. What made you decide to get a lawyer? I basically went to see what I had, because I don't, I don't know. After many rejections, she eventually found this man, Craig Hensel, a Greensboro-based attorney. It was my first year of practice, and uh, she called me with a case. But it struck me as something that was probably actionable and that was uh, definitely wrong, and, and something needed to be done about it. And when you heard the audio, what did you think? It was damning. It's a big boost to the case's credibility. He agreed to take on her case. He was the first person to kind of like 
Say, I believe you. And with that, the team looked for other victims, and the floodgates opened. So many women came forward that legal aid got involved. Some had similar allegations but didn't know each other, so that was something that struck me. History has shown us that women with that many layers of vulnerability are usually not believed. Say, oh, you're black. Oh, you're poor. Oh, you're an ex-con. Even the major cases we've seen in the news, it takes dozens of women to come forward before people start saying, oh, well, maybe, maybe they're telling the truth. Tarana Burke is the advocate who first coined the phrase Me Too. But before spearheading this movement, she actually worked as a fair housing enforcer in Alabama. Sexual violence is not a Hollywood problem, it's a pervasive problem, and there's no part of the world, there's no group that it doesn't touch, no race, no religion, nobody. It just, it doesn't discriminate. But in North Carolina, because these women had spoken out, they were being believed. And their case had gotten so many plaintiffs that now the federal justice and housing departments began investigating. In this case, we were able to generate a national discussion around a very serious issue. When was the moment that you really felt vindicated, like the truth had come out? When the other women came out, it was like, okay, now they know, you know, that everybody ain't lying. You know? The stories from these women, just a slice of what women experience everywhere. We have um, our ongoing enforcement efforts, which in the last two years alone has resulted in $1.2 million in compensation for victims. HUD and DOJ are encouraging women to keep coming forward, putting out PSAs like this. I felt like no one would listen to me. He had more power than I did. Telling the stories of real women who battle harassment at home, like Autumn Weaver. I was a recovering addict. I was getting my kids back from um, state's custody. What did you having a house mean for you and your kids? Everything. In May of 2012, she was approved for public housing and moved into her own apartment in Kansas City. She says she was harassed by her property manager, Derek Estelle. Eventually, she says, giving into his demands for sex. When it's in your home and they're your landlord or they're your property manager, at the end of the day, you deal with them 365 days out of the year. It's like you're a prisoner in your own home. Weaver filed a complaint against the housing authority, which was eventually settled and awarded her damages. Estelle has always denied any allegations made against him. He did not provide ABC with a comment. In a statement to ABC News, the Kansas City, Kansas Housing Authority said it did not become aware of the allegations related to Mr. Estelle until discovery was conducted in the DOJ lawsuit. The organization also says they've implemented new policies to prevent harassment moving forward. It just made me a stronger woman. It just made me value myself more. As for Kristen Sellers, her class action was settled for $2.7 million, the largest of its kind at the time. By the time the investigation ended, 71 additional women had come forward with complaints. Eric Pender denied all allegations of sexual harassment and discrimination and did not respond to ABC News' request for comment. The company that employed Pender tells ABC News that they take very seriously the right of all individuals to be treated with dignity and respect, adding that it has changed its leadership and are committed to taking responsibility anytime we fall short. We give them power when we be quiet. That's what I've learned and through this whole ordeal. This is her new home, hers and hers alone. She's no longer in the public housing system. What does the phrase home sweet home mean to you? To have love under a roof, have peace, so it's just, it's sweet. Her Fair Housing Justice Award hangs on the wall, along with her meditations. Sing like no one's listening, dance like nobody's watching, love like you've never been hurt. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.